Tarmac uh, is on the Sustainable uh, Seas Governance Group. I've known Tarmac for, for a long time and had the, uh, the honour of sitting alongside him in a number of uh, director capacities, and uh, it's wonderful to have you here with us today. Tarmac is of Ngaitahu and Ngāti Kuri descent and has been a member of the Sustainable Seas uh, Governance Group since it was established. Um, he is a professional director, uh, having served on numerous boards and government uh, panels across culture and heritage, economic, environmental and social spheres. Ladies and gentlemen, Tar Mark Solomon. Uh, well, tēnā tātou. Uh, first, I'd like to start off with, I'm the lay person in front of you. I'm not a professor, I'm not a scientist, I'm a lay person. The blue economy, I'd like to posit that my whānau, my hapu, my iwi has been fully involved in the blue economy for generations. Pre-European, fishing in the sea wasn't just about subsistence, it was also about trade. And if I'll use hapuka in my region, my people used to fish for the hapuka in the winter. They would cut the hapuka up and they would stack it into pōha, then they would sweat the head of the groper to get the fat out and fill the pōha up with the fat, and then that was traded up and down the line with other hapu, other iwi, for stuff that we couldn't have in our region. Uh, my family started whale watch in Kaikoura. So, in Kaikoura, whale watch has been quite good in the sense that for every dollar that whale watch has taken through its door, our community has taken in seven dollars. So it's been a seven to one ratio through using the ocean, viewing whales as part of the blue economy. Um, my background, I, as Pahia said, I spent nearly 10 years, 18 months over time on Tohu Kaimawana. I am the founder of Te Korowai o Te Taia Marakura in Kaikoura. I'm also a legislated guardian of Kaikoura. Um, now we took the issue of our coastline to our community and asked our community if they would work with us to develop a coastal use plan based on it being managed by our community. And I have to say in those first corridor that we had, I did identify to the recreational fishers that they were one of the targets that needed to be dealt with. And when I was immediately challenged on this, I said, well, let me use my own family, myself, my wife, and my four children. If I was to throw them screaming into the sea, theoretically, as a six members of a single whānau, my whānau could bring home in a single day 90 blue cod, 90 kahawai, 1,750 cockles, 400 kinners, 60 crayfish, 60 pāwa in a single day. But as a family, sitting down for a meal, we can't eat three power. So we challenged the recreationals that we needed to reduce the take, that our community used the sea as a larder, but as a place to get a feed, not as a place to fill your freezer. And I'm happy to say that we got a unanimous agreement from the recreationals to reduce all takes on the Kaikoura coastline, which was also legislated. So when the rest of the nation was dealing with 10 power, we could only take six. Where it used to be 250 cockles per person, it's now 50, with a maximum of 250 per group. We reduced everything. I would like to say that about four years into this, the recreationals come back to the table, or we wish to put blue cod back on the table. I immediately assumed that they wanted to go back to what it was, up to 15. We were greatly surprised to hear from the, the recs we think 10 blue cod is too many, we should reduce it to six. That's ample for any family. So we've used the blue economy as a community. It does sustain our, our people. The issue that I do have around the blue economy is the global warming. It's bringing things that we've never had before. As I was saying just to Conrad before, Akuro Harbour for the last seven weeks has been five to six degrees warmer than ever recorded before. Now in 2015 I was in Fremantle, went over with the New Zealand Institute to have a talk to the Australians and how they dealt with the tensions between the commercial, the recreational and the customary. But they were telling us that the year before there's a current that comes down the face 
of Western Australia. It came down three degrees warmer, it stayed at that temperature for three months, and it almost wiped out the red abalone along that Perth coastline. A three degree change, five to six in Akaroa Harbour, five degrees in the Tasman. Two weeks ago, on my way to Auckland, I'm talking to a Naitohu fisherman who receives a phone call from his skipper south of the Campbell Islands. Greg, I've never seen seas like it down here. 30 years fishing down here, and it's like a mill pond. There's no wind. I've never had it like this before. We are now catching kingfish and snapper south of the Campbell Islands. We are now catching snapper all year round in Fovo Strait. You go to Tautohu and listen to the Fakatoki out there. They've always talked about how the snapper comes into our waters at the start of spring, but midway through autumn they're reversing and they're heading back north because our waters have always been traditionally too cold for them. They don't go back anymore. They're there all year round. So I have my concerns around the blue economy, not about the concept, because I love it, because I think it's an open slaver out there, what we can do, but the sea is in chaos at the moment. And I think it's going to bring new issues to us that we've never had before, which will bring new challenges in further developing the blue economy. But a pleasure to be here in front of you. Kia ora tato.